By the time the world of movies and the world of education get into the streets of black America, some strange things happen. Because what history and the movies have told the black man is that he's nobody unless he joins the white world. That is not true. Do not believe that. That is dead wrong. They don't discriminate against me because I'm a Christian. They're discriminating against me because I'm black. I grudge them, grudge them on, you know. I threw him a fight for black liberation. And him a one true warrior. Them I want to try to stop him. But them can't stop the man. Them can't stop Raheem Shabazz. That's why anytime me want to listen to revolutionary liberation vibes, me tune into Necessary Blackness podcast. Me not hear them like a Yaga Yaga podcast them. I be your Necessary Blackness me rock with. Anytime me want your true warrior talking. Lord God. Check out MCJ musicculturejournalism.com hip-hop is a global movement reaching all aspects of music culture and journalism mcj is the premier destination for culture driven video and editorial content around the country check out musicculturejournalism.com log on today Elementary Genocide provides a critical expose of mass incarceration, the war on drugs, and the connection between slavery, capitalism, and the prison industrial complex. Visit our website at www.elementarygenocide.com. Now available, Elementary Genocide, the School to Prison Pipeline. Elementary Genocide 2, the Board of Education versus the Board of Incarceration. And the newest release, Elementary Genocide 3, Academic Holocaust. Log on today to purchase your very own three-set docu-series. Wingy Apparel is the latest fly and revolutionary streetwear to hit the market. Wingy is the outfitters of freedom fighters everywhere. Wingy is a Swahili word that means abundance. No one has ever gone broke by giving. So if you have it in abundance, sharing is better than receiving. Follow us on Instagram at Wingy Apparel. That's at W-I-N-G-I-A-P-P-A-R-E-L. Peace and Black Power family, this is your host, Raheem Shabazz, and we are here for another episode of Necessary Blackness Podcast, and today, family, we have a special guest in the building, and her name is Maria Richards. And Maria Richards is a marketing strategist with over 15 years, family of corporate and freelance experience in copywriting, marketing, automation, and media buying. She's also the owner of Management 24 and serves as vice president of the board of directors for the mobile area of the Black Chambers of Commerce. So, family, let's welcome Maria Richard. Maria, how are you? I'm good, Rod. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm excited. Absolutely. Now, before we get started, I got to ask you, as a dear friend of mine, how are you dealing with this coronavirus and everything that's going on? Well, I mean, I'm I'm actually coping pretty well, to be honest with you. Um, I've been spending a lot of time reading and also just writing and really focusing my time on achieving some of those things on the to-do list. So um, I'm actually doing pretty good. Business is doing well. I mean, a lot of business owners are eager to get these uh, marketing and communications out to their audience. So business is doing well. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm coping pretty good with the quarantine thing. Now, the operative word that you said is business is doing very well. For a lot of people, including myself, I have to be honest and admit, business has not been the same. But it's manageable. And one of the things that you said on your Facebook, and um, a lot of people gravitated towards that post, is that you mentioned that we should all emerge from this epidemic with a new skill set, a new stream of income, and a new attitude. So my question to you is, what are some of those skill sets that we can acquire in these troubling times that is recession-proof, that we can always rely on in a time of uh, distress, economic turmoil, and so have you? 
Sure. So one that comes to mind for sure would be trading options. So I have a colleague who is an affiliate partner of mine and he does this full time. The myths of, you know, you having to have four and five figures to invest as a uh, as an options trader, you actually can start with just a few hundred dollars. So um, options trading would be one. Another one, which isn't necessarily a an investment vehicle in the traditional sense, more or less of an investment in yourself, which in my opinion, an investment itself is the gift that keeps giving. And that is to learn a new language. You know, I mean, when you learn a new language, Ra, it opens up the world of opportunity for you. So if you want to learn French, if you want to learn Spanish, just imagine the the job opportunities, the places that you can visit the the communities that you can assist even here in the United States as a translator that's another skill set I think people should look into and, and look don't get me wrong I realize that you know mastering a language um, let's predict that we'll be in this quarantine for about three to four months mastering a language within that time frame uh, is probably not doable for most people but at least getting to a conversational, stage of learning a new language, I think would be phenomenal. Another thing that comes to mind is writing a book. I mean, all of us have, we're gifted with these unique talents and skill sets, our superpower. Now is an excellent time to go ahead and write a book, sharing your experience, your knowledge, your expertise with the world and putting it on Amazon. I mean, what will it, what will it hurt? You know what I'm saying? Amazon is a global company. People are still buying things Mm -hmm. on Amazon. So I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. So those are just a few of many, many, many. I could go on for for probably hours, but those are just a few that really come to mind at this moment, Rob. So we got option trading. We got learning a new language and writing a book. And I think those are skill sets that um, each and every one of us can acquire. And that is something that no matter what, we're going to always rely on communication. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in times like this, no one stops reading. In fact, I think more people are reading at an alarming rate than ever before. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're you are you hit the hit the hammer right on the uh, on the head of the nail, man. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Now, my next question. Right. I wrote a Facebook post. Right. And. Pretty much what I was saying was that capitalism will not survive this global level of extinction like threat and a Mm -hmm. new model of doing business will emerge. What do you think about that statement and what does the future look like for black entrepreneurs? Because in my humble opinion, it's never going to go back to the same. We're going to have to emerge to something better and beyond what we previously was experiencing, or it's going to be worse than you can even imagine. But I'm optimistic that the future for black entrepreneurs is probably going to emerge more so. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I think that I do believe that we're going to see a different version of capitalism, right? I think that. Corporate greed will probably um, make a turnaround. It will be forced to, because here's the thing about Black people in particular. I firmly believe that we all have an entrepreneurial gene within us. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, we are the descendants, especially those of us who are Black Americans, or just Black people throughout the diaspora. We have been forced repeatedly throughout our time on this continent or, you know, through again, throughout the world, we have been forced to be innovative. We have been forced to be creative with very limited resources. So I'm of the belief that there is an entrepreneur within each and every single one of us. Now, whether or not we choose to channel that inner person, that inner entrepreneur, that's a choice. But I do believe that that is just inherently a part of being Black, especially being Black in America, where we are constantly forced to be innovative and creative with the way in which we navigate our uh, situation here in this country. With that being said, um, again, I do believe that capitalism will look different from what it used to look like. Um, I believe that people who are open to change, embracing the new normal, 
those folks will thrive and survive. We have to keep in mind that with every recession, there emerges a new class of millionaires and billionaires, Ra. So Mm -hmm. it really is a matter of shifting your mindset from that of the glass is half half empty to being half full, right? If you have the mentality that, okay, look, we've been faced with an unprecedented event in the history of our lifetime, How do we emerge from this situation? If you're going to take on the personality of a victim and someone who's very fearful, well, nine times out of 10, unfortunately, you're probably not going to fare well when all of this, you know, when the new normal comes, you won't necessarily excel. But for those of us who have the mentality, we have the confidence and we are open to embracing the new normal and then not only embracing it, but in some, in some shape or form, pushing it, right? Pushing for it the new normal, we are going to do just fine. And I think that the bottom line, what this has taught us is just how insignificant we are as human beings, whether you're white, black, Asian, Hispanic, whatever you are, how insignificant we are when it comes to mother nature. I mean, you know, mother nature is going to move on with or without us, but here we are, you know, depending upon it and now being forced to sit still and really reassess and reevaluate our contributions to the planet. So I think, you know, again, if we just keep a, an open mind and really push ourselves to be innovative and creative, which, again, I believe we all have it in us, especially as black people, we're going to do just fine. You said one key thing. You said this proves to us that mother, mother nature does not discriminate. <laughs> and I tell exactly. I tell people all the time, nature has no gray areas. Only human beings got gray areas. You're gonna either eat or you're gonna mm-hmm. be a, or you're gonna be eaten. So exactly. We gotta choose which one we wanna do. If we're gonna eat or we're gonna be eaten, or you gonna pray, or you're gonna become the prey. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> with people is power. And we the holders and keepers of ourselves in predicament, and we got to seize this power. You know, um, in the Bible, it tells you, to him who has more shall be given. So we got to mm-hmm. get it, and we got to be able to get it in abundance, and we got to be able to get it and take care of those that are less fortunate and our people. And that's by teaching them. Not just giving them, but teaching them how to get it. Now, earlier, you talked about being an entrepreneur and how black folks, we have this entrepreneur spirit and we make things happen out of nothing. Now, Mm -hmm. one of the most important things of that is the mindset. Tell me what type of mindset an individual needs to have in order to build a to build and to generate wealth? The biggest part when it comes to mindset, Ra, is number one, we have to change the way that we revere money. So especially in our community, you know, with I believe 80 or 90 percent of black Americans in particular being Christian, identifying themselves as Christian or religious, um, in the Christian indoctrination we are taught, and I'm not a Christian, by the way, but I'm saying we as in, as in Black people, Black Americans specifically, we are taught to revere money as a source of evil, right? How many mm-hmm. times have you heard that being quoted? You know, money is the root of all evil. Well, if you grow up your entire life thinking that money is evil, equating it to evil, then you are essentially almost fearful and, and really don't even think that you need money or that you should want money because you think it's a bad thing, right? And so I think that that's the first step is that we've got to, we've got to overcome some of those mental blocks as it relates to our relationship with money. Money is no different from a hammer. A hammer can be used to help you build your home or it could be used to knock somebody upside the head. Okay. (laughs) Money is a tool. It's Mm -hmm. a tool. And so like a tool, you know, you, in this sense, we want to talk about empowerment. So essentially with mindset, you have to realize that money in a sense is spiritual and and it starts with you being able to believe in yourself, Rod, the most valuable asset that we all have is our mind. That's the most valuable asset. I don't care if 
somebody owns a $10 million property, that is not more valuable than that individual's mind. So the power of controlling our thoughts and what we put into our minds, see, especially at a time like now with this pandemic, we got to be very careful about consuming all of these horrific news stories. I, I saw something on Facebook the other day and I wish I could unsee it, but a gentleman committed suicide. Apparently he was uh, tested positive for COVID-19 and couldn't live with it and just committed suicide. And and so, you know, we have to be careful not to allow these images and these in these very negative news stories to enter into our subconscious. You have to guard that thing. You have to guard it like you would your heart. So like I said, the biggest thing with mindset is number one, we need to look at money from a spiritual standpoint in that in which it can be used as a tool of empowerment, not action. And think of it this way, Rob. If I had a million dollars and I choose to use that money to help elevate my community, well, my impact is far greater than if I only have a thousand dollars and I'm trying to help my compute my community. Now it doesn't mean I can't help my community with a thousand dollars. That's not what I'm saying. But understand that when money is placed, a large sum of it is placed in the hands of a seemingly quote unquote good person, then that money has the potential to impact the world in significant ways, in positive ways. Mm -hmm. So I think when we start with mindset, again, treating money as if it's spiritual, but then also having the self-confidence and the self identity to realize that you are not only capable of attracting money to yourself, you are actually worthy of attracting money to yourself. You deserve wealth. And I think that that is very important for us to embrace. Wow. You really said it. You really brought it home when you talked about money is spiritual. Because if we look at it, the height of spirituality is economics. And the more spiritual you become, the more control you have over your economics. Because mm -hmm. when you break it down, economics simply means management, care, balance, and proper utilization. And mm -hmm. I didn't really know the value of money and how to acquire it until I figured out that money is currency, currency is energy, and mm -hmm. th the name of the game is that you have to deal, we're talking about efficiency and movement. So utilizing the least amount of energy as possible and still being effective. In other words, exactly. doing the least amount of work <laughs> and getting the most money. Yeah. So when you understand it from that aspect, um, it all falls in place. There's no need to be scared of money. In fact, we need to all get money into abundance. And mm -hmm. when you get it into abundance, you need to give because no one ever went broke from giving. And that is the exactly. model of one of my companies, which is Wingy. And we live by that. But, Maria, um, you're doing a lot of things. I, I see you online. I see how you helping individuals upscale their business and people are always inquiring and asking you questions. What is the number one question that um, you get online as an individual that uh, consults with business and do uh, management and uh, things like that? One of the most common questions I get is how to monetize an audience. That's a very common question. And so for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with what monetization means, it, it really is what it kind of sounds like, which is how do I turn this illiquid asset into a liquid asset, essentially, right? Um, how do I liquidate this thing that I have? And so that's a very common question that I get. And the short answer to that is you have to really know your audience, um, I'll never forget one time, you know, just, uh, I have a lot of affiliate partnerships. And so just for the sake of testing out my audience, I posted an affiliate link where I was promoting some courses. Now this was just on a regular Facebook page. It wasn't my fan page or anything like that. It was almost like I was just kind of sharing, you know, some knowledge and information and resources with the people that follow me on Facebook. And so posted this affiliate link and I was like, guys, I just spent like a hundred bucks on 10 classes with this online, you know, university. I encourage you all to take advantage of this sale and, and invest in yourself as well. 
and Ross in a week i got a check in the mail for 200 dollars. i had no idea i had no idea nobody even told me and said yo hey maria thanks for this this link i just bought me some classes nobody even said anything right i didn't even know people had clicked on the link i just threw it out there just to see what happened so mm. you can imagine my utter shock and surprise when i got a check in the mail for 200 dollars about a week or later um and so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, I think in terms of monetization of an audience, the biggest thing is you really have got to understand your audience and speak directly to their interests and their pain points. If you know that your audience is very passionate about Black entrepreneurship, Black empowerment, well, then you need to speak to that. You need to find products and services that will speak to that as well, speak to that need, to that desire, to that want of your audience. So that is my short answer to that question. Of course, there's so much more in terms of technologies that you can use and, and all of that. But that's the short answer to, to my to the question is, you know, just find out what your audience's pain points and interests and desires are and speak directly to that and offer them products and or services that will fulfill those needs. That's right. You got to have some type of product, service or skill set to offer your people, because if not, you're going to remain a part of the consumer class. And I know right. I know there's a lot of people that's sitting home right now that wish that they had an online business because online don't stop. Everything on the outside could be closed, shut down. Mm -hmm. But if you have an online store, it's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I was going to say exactly. a week, but it's a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you still making money, so it's about exactly. uh, upscaling your business and, and, and definitely finding um, your audience. I see. Um, in fact, I helped a sister out recently um, because I seen a very disturbing video of. Um, I want to say these individuals was in India and they was making um, surgical masks and N forty five masks, and the problem was that they was making it. And the factory was in filth. And you seen mm. the guy wasn't, they, they didn't look like they had the best hygiene and one was digging in his nose, you know. Mm. And um, I'm like, wow, you can get infected with a mask if you buy one of these. Right. And I told everybody to support this dear sister who was um, taking African cloth, uh, the Dinka symbol and the, uh, the Kente cloth. And she was making these masks and putting the filters in them. And, you know, you can um, uh, uh, refill the filters. And she, the, you know, oh, the wow. sister had it down pat. By the end of the day, she had to make at least 10 to 15 sales. You know, wow. it was about 30 comments. And that was just for me seeing something, knew that there was an individual that was able to fulfill a need of the people. And she used her entrepreneurial spirit to put that out there. And, and we gravitated towards that. So it's basically what you were saying, you know, they got to say, um, if you build it, they will come. You know, if you build it, they will come. And you, and you know what, Rod, to add to, add to that really quickly you know, honestly, you don't even have to have a product or service. If somebody else has a product or service that you believe in and you know is effective, you can sell that person's product or service to make your money on a commission. So that's another thing to consider. Maybe you don't have the time. You're just not interested in creating your own thing. Maybe you don't want to trade your time for dollars, whatever it is. You don't even have to worry about trying to create your own products or services because you can just be an affiliate partner for somebody else. That's Which right. Another business model that I'm very privy to. You're right. Let me tell you, if it get too hard for me, I'm going to call her back up say, listen, I can help you sell everything <laughs> in the inventory. That's what I'm saying. Hey, what's my <laughs> cut right here? <laughs> But yeah, so Maria, hey, don't wait. Do it now, hey. I'm now. I'm too busy. I got my hand in the pot of a lot of different things. Okay. So you know, I but I said I, I said if it get too bad. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, Rod, right, as the vice chair of Mobile Area of Black Chambers of Commerce, right? Mm -hmm. What is your duty and responsibility, and what can? Because I know they got a Black Chamber of commerce in every locale, major city, county, state. Mm -hmm. 
what is the job of the Black Chambers of Commerce and how do they help and can they help black entrepreneurs? Yeah, so I'm going to start with the with the latter part of your question, which is what is the function of a black chamber? So I can't speak for all black chambers because all of us operate differently, obviously, according to the community's needs. But more specifically, the Mobile Area Black Chamber of Commerce, what we're focused on is educating empowering and encouraging black businesses in Mobile. So what that looks like is, you know, now this goes into the the uh, former part of your question, which was, what is my responsibility as vice chair of this organization? So my responsibility as a board member and executive committee leader of this organization is to ensure that we are living up to those three foundations of education, empowerment, and encouragement for black business owners in the city of Mobile. And what that looks like is we host a number of seminars and webinars and all sorts of workshops and trainings to help Black business owners either become better with customer service or monetize more of their assets or just get a a broad overview of some business processes such as CRMs and social media systems and things like that that they can use to expand their business. I would highly encourage anyone, no matter where you are, if there's a black chamber or even just a, you know, just your regular chamber, because Mobile has a a regular chamber as well, a regular, quote unquote, Mobile Area Chamber of Commerce, which has been around for over 100 years. But I would encourage you, wherever you are, to always join your local chamber, always, because the chamber is essentially a nexus for like-minded individuals. And there are a lot of resources that flow through a chamber of commerce. For example, government entities typically consult with chambers when they're getting ready to bring new business to to a city, right? Um, Governments typically consult with chambers when there is extra funding to help local business owners. So no matter who you are, where you are in the world, if there is a local chamber of commerce in your community and you're interested in trying to get your business out there or you just want to get a, a firmer understanding of how business works, I strongly encourage you to join a your local chamber, no matter where you are. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. I mean, you know, and obviously, of course, as vice chair, one of my primary responsibilities as well is to increase membership. So, you know, we do that, again, by being present just last hosted a four-day webinar series. It's titled uh, Mindset Mastery Monetization. And it was incredible. We had a young sister. She's my fellow soror of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Inc. She came in and spoke about mindset. She's a licensed clinical counselor. Then we had the chairman of the board, Levy King, came in and he spoke about business processes and and creating a culture, uh, a corporate culture within your business. Then we had the social media committee come in, Ramonica and, and Mary and Rodolfo came in and spoke about us, uh, social media and how to manage that. And then I closed it off with monetization. By the way, I forgot to mention my soror's name, Afia. Afia came in with the counseling piece and I closed it out with the monetization piece. So um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I highly recommend anybody join their local chamber of commerce, whether there's a black one there or not. If there is a black one there, of course, join the black one, but also join the other one, the mainstream one as well, because you're going to get different resources from each chamber. So I highly recommend Mm -hmm. it. So all that information that you just um, let us know about, um, that was given to those that was uh, members of the chamber? So we actually opened this one up to members of the community at large. So you didn't have to be a member of the chamber to take advantage of the webinar series we had last week. But uh, what we did, though, is we closed it off. So if you wanted a recording of that four day session uh, in full, you had to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce, of our chamber. Um, For those who are not members who signed up and they do want to see recordings, they're only going to get a few snippets on our Facebook page. So that's how we, how we manage that. Yeah. So it benefits to be a member. Absolutely. Now, now was that the, uh, show me the money, modern day monetization strategies with, uh, Maria Richard. Was that that's that? correct? Oh, okay. Yeah. I had seen that post. I thought it was, you know, how everybody, you know, they go on and jump on a live. Cause I, when I, when I seen the post, I was like, all right, I'll follow back and just click on the link and view it. 
But uh, unfortunately, you have to be a member. <laughs> All right, I get it, I get it. So yeah, uh, Maria, I just want to thank you. Um, now, there's going to be a lot of people. They're going to hear this, and they're going to want to know more. They want to know how they can follow you. What are your socials? How can people get in contact with you? Well, um, I'm actually glad that you asked that question because we are in the process of launching uh, a new platform. It's called theblackinvestor.com. Again, that's theblackinvestor.com. So the easiest way to reach me would be via email at this juncture because we are building out the social media platforms for theblackinvestor.com. Even though we do have a Facebook fan page, it's theblackinvestor.com. I'm sorry, not .com. My apologies. It's Facebook, you know, slash the black investor i think online or something like that um and then we do have an ig it's the underscore black underscore investor so that's our ig but you can reach me via e- email at info at the black investor.com again that's info at the black investor.com all one word new spaces none of that um and yeah i mean feel free to reach out i love connecting with my people and i mean let's let's get it you know how I know you real about your business, Maria? Because you ain't give out your personal no. Facebook. You like, you want to talk? You got to go to the blackinvestor.com, <laughs> the underscore black underscore investor. And that's right. Anybody that reach out, y'all better be serious, man, because Maria is one that is about her business in this time yes. of modern day modernization. And, and we all need to know that and, and, and have strategies to upscale our business. So with saying that, Maria, is there anything that I didn't ask you, that I should have asked you, that you want to say in your last closing words? I mean, honestly, Ra, I think we, we covered uh, all the bases. I would just really like to reiterate to every ear that is listening at this moment. You are the most valuable asset you have. And so don't ever let anybody tell you different. You are the most valuable asset you have. You are worthy of being wealthy. You are capable of being wealthy. And it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Just keep in mind that you are your most valuable asset. So treat yourself like the king or queen that you are. And make sure you protect your subconscious. Make sure you protect your environment your peace of mind, and let's get it, man. Like, we're all entrepreneurs. I mean, we, it's in us. It's just innate. We can't help it. So channel that inner entrepreneur. It doesn't mean you have to leave the day job, but channel that entrep- that inner entrepreneur, and, and let's get it. Let's build. That's right. You heard it here first on Necessary Blackness Podcast. I am your host, Raheem Shabazz, and we just finished speaking to Maria Richards, And she explained to us the importance of investing. And everybody out there should go check out the website, The Black Investor. And her last closing words, she said, you are your most valuable asset. And we know that today because the people that was most disrespected, the individuals at the drive-thru, the local individual Mm -hmm. at the grocery store is the most important person right now. Guess what? They the only ones that got jobs. Half of America ain't got a job right now. But if you <laughs> if you was a cashier at a grocery store or you worked the drive through at the McDonald's, Wendy's, even though we don't supposed to be eating that, we don't eat that, you still got your job. A lot of right. folks ain't got no job, man. But if you got a skill set, you gonna always have a job. Absolutely. If you're your own boss, you're going to always have a job. Even yep, if you had a true. nine to five and you did hair on the side or you babysit, whatever you did on the side, you still got a job. You just got to know how true. to upscale that job and monetize it. But we ain't going to give it to you all here. You're going to have to go and visit Maria at theblackinvestor.com. All right, peace and black power, family. We out of here. Peace.